I have a great video for you today. And am I ready for Paris? Hello, booktube and book lovers. Um, I hope you like my video today because I think it's really important. It's seven books to read before you get any older and one not to. So um, I thought of this because I'm, I'm hitting my, I hit my seventh decade and I've read a lot of books. And uh, instead of, cat I'm going to put them in categories, but uh, I'm going to give you one specific book that I think most people should read. Okay, so we're going to start with number one, and that's coming of age stories that touch you. So it's going to be different for everyone, but I think that the one book that touched me as a teenager and might touch you no matter where you're from is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. And I talked about this in my last video, so I won't go much into this since I have a lot of books to talk about. But basically, it's the beloved American classic about a young girl's coming of age at the turn of the 20th century in Brooklyn, New York, where I come from. And uh, she goes through a lot of hardships, but she has a dream, just like the tree outside her window. She's going, she's going to bloom, and you feel that. This is a semi-autobiographical story by Betty Smith. Um, then, of course, how can I stop with one book? Uh, this is a book that touched me personally, and I read it just last year. So you can read a coming-of-age story that can touch you um, later in life, and that's Alberta and Jacob by Cora Sandel. Yes, I had a personal connection with this book because Cora Sandel suffered from something that I suffer from, and that is um, uh, a crossed eye. I didn't want to say the big name for it, but that's what it is. And she also suffered from a mother who, and father, but mostly her mother, who was very critical of her in every way, and so did I. And even though she was, the story is in the, Nor Norway and above the Arctic Circle, I still connected with it. And it's a wonderful coming of age story. And it's part of a trilogy, as I said before. Okay, so those are the two books I think everyone can get something out of to read of coming of age. The second category or the second book, it's not really one book, and I got this out of the library, uh, is Shakespeare. Yes, I know. This is the complete works. Oh, and it's a tome. And I haven't read every Shakespeare story, play, poem, but um, I think everyone would get something out of reading a Shakespeare play. And I would start maybe, and I did some research on this, and I would start maybe with the plays that don't have too many subplots, like many of Shakespeare's plays do. So Romeo and Juliet. Um, I, I don't know if Hamlet has more subplots, but that's an easier uh, Shakespeare to get into. Um, and King Lear. I have an interesting story about King Lear. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to the Stratosphere, Shakespeare, Stratford Theater in Connecticut, Stratford, Connecticut, when I was in the eighth grade, and we saw King Lear. And unfortunately, uh, our school buses came toward the end. And though I was like, oh, we have to see a Shakespeare play, I was so excited, I wanted to stay because I, I didn't know how it ended. And for some reason, I want to see it on stage before I read how it ended. But um, yeah. Everyone should read Shakespeare. Um, there are other ways of reading it than just reading the play. There are, um, there are plays that, there are Shakespeare plays that 
are in modern language. Uh, for example, even West Side Story was taken from Romeo and Juliet. And if you, you watch the new movie or the old movie, like I watch both movies, um, you can really, if you read Romeo and Juliet, you can see how that you know, connection comes. So yeah, this is a book you should read before book. This is a play, this is a person an author, Shakespeare, you should read before you get any older. Okay, number three, let me put this down. Um, you should read a book that gives you comfort and makes you happy. And I think I have um, an author, a book that made me happy when I was in my 30s and is making me happy since I joined BookTube. And that's Persuasion by Jane Austen. I read all of Jane Austen's books. Uh, I've reread Jane Austen's books, except for Pride and Prejudice, which I plan to do on um, Jane Austen July. So then I can say I read all of her books, her major books. Um, I've read one of her minor juvenilia as well. Uh, another book that um, I read recently and made me feel very happy is The Country Girls by Edna O'Brien. And when I read the whole trilogy, but uh, w it was a buddy read with Alba. Uh, but the first one uh, is very poetic. And not only does it bring you into the story of an Irish girl growing up in the 50s uh, in a very poor family with an alcoholic father, but the setting, everything about this is a perfect book. So I think everyone should read Edna O'Brien, The Country Girls, and one of Jane Austen's books. Anyone will do to make you feel better. My fourth book is Aesop's Fairy Fables. So fairy tales and fables are something that or books that everyone can get something out of. Um, Einstein says, or he was purported to say, if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. And I loved Hans Christian Andersen, but how I started with fairy tales was from comic books. And I'm gonna have something on over here uh, Classic Illustrated Junior was a comic book uh, series that started in 1943 until 1970. And my favorite uh, comic fairy tale was Snow White and Red Rose, which would be depicted over here. And this is how I got into reading. And after I read all those fairy tales, they cost, they were expensive for the time. For the time. And I'm going to talk about this in another uh, video more, but um, this comic book series started with classics, uh, classics illustrated where there were um, the Three Musketeers and, you know, classics like that in graphic fairy tale form. And then they started the junior classics, which were fairy tales and fables. And they had a big influence on my life and uh, I started going to the library and finding every single fairy tale and Aesop's Fables was one of them. So I think that everyone should read Aesop's Fables or if you can find the comic books and like I said they were 15 cents so they were higher than the normal comic books but if I remember correctly I bought them in a used uh, bookstore, so they might have been like 10 cents or 12 cents, but um, yeah, that was a lot of money then. So I saved my pennies for each one, and I wish I would have kept them because uh, they were worth a lot. They would be worth a lot of money right now. Not only that, but they would be worth something more than money to me, and that's um, something that comforted me when I was young. So we're up to five. And five is books that affect your culture and those from other cultures. So
So for this, I have to give you two or more. And one is Man's Search for Meaning um, by Viktor E. Frankl. And it's also, he was in three concentration camps. I'm half Jewish and half Puerto Rican. So um, I always had an interest in reading about the Holocaust or the Shoah, as we say, as, as is, it's said in, in Israeli. In Hebrew? <laughs> Not Israeli. Okay, so it says one of the most outstanding contributions to psychological thought in the last 50 years. And uh, it's, all, it's, about, it's a memoir about his time in three concentration camps, how he survived, but it also, it, you know, he was a very learned man when he came in. And uh, he gives us really good psychological insight on how to deal with anything that's terrible and horrific. And believe me, I don't think there's many things that are as terrible and terrific as, you know, what he went through. And, you know, we're still going through things like that now, like in Ukraine. Um, also, Night. I think everyone should read Night. It's also the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, and it says a slim volume of terrifying power. So um, he was born in Transylvania, and uh, when he was a teenager, him and his family were sent to a concentration camp. And uh, it's it's a very very dark book, dark like night, but it's also um, shows you what people can go through and still survive. And he has ideas about survival too. And uh, I don't have Anne Frank, but I do have the last, um, the last seven months of Anne Frank, which was an interesting book by Willie Lindauer, who I think was one of the people that, uh, that touched her life during the time she was alive. Um, so my last, uh, well, and I do want to bring back other stories about the Holocaust, and one was the Memory Palace. So intergen intergenerational trauma, it strikes people whose parents and grandparents and people they didn't even know have gone through the same trauma. And this is true in the African American experience as well as the Jewish experience as well as um, Puerto Rican experience. So um, this is one book that I really got a lot out of is The Memory Palace. And well, in another, my other culture, uh, Piri Thomas wrote Down These Mean Streets. He's an Afro-Caribbean, half Puerto Rican who lived in New York during the 70s. He was addicted to drugs. And this tells about um, a report from the guts and heart of a submerged population group. It claims our attention and emotion because of the honesty and pain of a life led in outlaw fringe status down these mean streets. It's a classic, and he just passed away. And uh, so those are some of the books. And this is a memoir, so it, there's other memoirs that, um, that come into the nonfiction, uh, nonfiction and memoirs. And uh, a few that I read that really touched me were, um, Underground in Berlin, which was my favorite book of last year by Marie Jalowitz Simon. And uh, she, a young woman's extraordinary tale of survival in the heart of Nazi Germany. And I really uh, love that. It, it's, it reads like a thriller. And I always talk about that. Uh, other nonfiction books uh, that helped me and this is, goes into the one book that I suggest people don't read. I'm reading A Year in Provence. Uh, I'm going to Paris and Provence, and I want to get, I, I'm, learn, I'm starting to learn a little more French, and um, learning about the place where you're going to. Uh, Hans Christian Andersen that said, travel is living. 
to travel is to live and I believe that so I'd rather have travel uh, than material possessions in my life and that's the way I always was another book um, that helped me was uh, Wishcraft how to get what you really want um, and I given this to many people it helped me with hope hope is a very important thing and when I didn't have uh, mental health I always had hope and hope is a very strong powerful emotion um, I think I'm getting to the end there's another one letting go uh, by Zeb Wanderer and Tracy Cabot that helped me through my divorces and that was really helpful okay now what's the one book I say not to read not to read before you get any older that's diet books quick loss diet books I spent a lot of my energy going on diets when I was young and getting every diet book out of the library and that was a big waste of time big waste of time because I would lose the weight you know and then I would gain it back or I would then you know it brings back like a lot of bad feelings you know that you're a failure etc so don't read quick loss diet books by Stillman or anybody else well I hope you enjoyed this um, pre Paris video and um, I have one more video coming up before I leave and I hope to do some uh, short videos of me and my daughter in Paris and um, I'm excited I'm happy and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please consider doing so and hit the notification bell comment like um, I really uh, love and appreciate so many of you both my both the commenters and the people that are also booktubers so until we meet again shall I say au revoir <laughs> and aloha